Good day to you lovely people. Hope your families and businesses are doing great. It's good to be here again and I bring a word of encouragement to you all. Find joy in every day, not because life is always good, but because God is. Thanks to both my old and new subscribers. And if you haven't subscribed yet, don't be left out. Join our wonderful family. In today's tutorial, I'll be showing you how to cut and sew a halter neck dress. So sit and relax and let's get started. We will be starting by drafting our basic bodies block. But in case you need more information about constructing a basic bodies or basic skirt pattern, I'll leave a link in the description box below. I have gone ahead to draw the starting line for the measurements. The next line is the shoulder to bust point measurement, which is 10 and a half inches and shoulder to waist measurement, which is 15 and a half inches. On this line, I'll measure the neck width starting from the center front fold. I'll mark three inches. The neck depth is three inches as well. So go down by three inches and mark. Use a curve ruler to join the points together to form the front neck line. To form the back neckline, the depth is 1 inch, so go down by 1 inch from the starting point to the center fold and mark. Connect point to the initial 3 inches neck width and make a curve to form the back neckline. Next, measure half your shoulder length on the starting line. Come down by 1 inch and mark. Mine is 7.5 inches in this case. Connect to neck width using a straight line to form the shoulder slope. From that same point, Moving downwards, place your armhole length minus an inch and draw a straight line. That is because you don't want anything to be revealed in that area while wearing your dress. Draw a perpendicular line from the armhole line and extend it to form the chest line. The next thing we're going to do is to insert our dart. To do that, measure your nipple to nipple measurement, divide this measurement by two, then place your measurement on the bust point line and Place that same measurement on the waistline. Come down by one inch or half an inch. Put your mark. Then mark half an inch on both sides of the point on the waistline. Use your ruler to connect and form the dart legs just like I am doing. And we have formed the waist dart. The next thing we're going to do is to place a quarter of our bust circumference measurement on the chest line. You mark it. Go to the waistline. Mark a quarter of your waist circumference measurement plus one inch for that. Then you use your pasta master to connect these two points together just like I am doing. To form the halter style, all you have to do is to place a curve ruler or pattern master and make a curve starting from the neck width to the armhole region. Okay, so you can see how it looks now. It's already coming out. So the next thing I'm going to do is to put side that. To do that, from the bust apex point, move out by an inch mark. Then at the side seams, measure three quarters of an inch on both sides of the bust point line. Mark and connect the points to form the side darts. Now that we have taken out the side darts, we have to replace it back. So we have to add 1.5 inches. Remember also at the waist, we replaced the one inch that we took out for the waist dart. Now that you are done with that, join everything together just like I'm doing. Once you close up your side darts, it's going to balance out at the bottom part. So let's go ahead and cut. Before cutting, it is necessary to fold in your side darts so that you don't fall short while sewing your dress. Okay, so when you fold it in, shape it very well with your uh, marker. Then you can cut through. Make sure you cut from the back neckline. I've gone ahead to cut out my back block. I just went ahead and place the front block on another pattern paper. I left one inch allowance for the zipper. Then I cut off the um, extra one and a half inches that I used because of the side darts. I've also gone ahead to place my chest line. And from that chest line, I measured my nipple to nipple measurement and came down by one inch to form the darts at the back. Then also, you will not place any side darts, okay? The back doesn't need any side darts, you can see. But if I fold in my darts in front, you can see that it has balanced up with the back, okay? So all we have to do now is to cut out the front neckline. To eliminate bulge at the zipper area on the waistline, move in by half an inch away from the center back line and connect this point all the way up to the neckline. From the center back line, 
on the waistline move out also by half an inch and connect with a line all the way up then cut out the excess this is the lovely fabric we'll be using today and i'll be transferring my patterns onto the fabric i've gone ahead to cut out my pattern on the fabric for the front i've added half an inch seam allowance at the neckline and armhole area one inch for the side seam allowance and half an inch for the bottom joining allowance. Remember you have to place the front fabric on fold before cutting so you can see the center fold here. For the back panel, I've also added half an inch seam allowance at the neckline and armhole area. One inch for the side seam allowance and half an inch for the bottom joining allowance. And this is just the zipper area. So right now we'll be transferring our darts onto the fabric. At the apex point of your dart, place in a pin and hold it down. Lift up your pattern paper, make a mark at that point where the pin comes out of. Okay, don't use a pen as I'm using. I'm using it just because it's blue. I tried the chalk and it was not showing very well, so I had to look for another way. Okay, so just extend your dart legs. Use your scissors to snip it. Okay, so that it will act as a guide to connect to that point where you have marked. Alright, so you connect the point right now. You place your ruler. Make sure you place it exactly where you snipped. Then you use your chalk or whatever you have to connect the darts. With this same method, transfer all the other darts on both the back and front panel. It's time to draft out the bishop collar. First, you measure the front neckline on the pattern paper. Make sure you don't add the seam allowance to it. Measure with your tape the way I'm doing to get accurate measurements. Record your measurements, then do the same for the back, starting from the center back line, then record as well. Draw a line on your piece of paper. On that line, place a point, then label the left side front and the right side back. Now insert the back neckline measurement starting from the point towards the right and mark for me I have 3 inches. The width of our collar is 1.5 inches so go up on that mark by 1.5 inches and draw a line. From the midpoint towards the left insert the front neckline measurement and I have 4 3 quarters then mark. Go up by an inch and mark as well. Connect that mark to the midpoint on the line using a curved ruler. At an angle of 90 degrees, go up by 1.5 inches, which is the collar width. Next, go up by 1.5 inches from the center point on the line. Connect it to the perpendicular line on the right. Then use your curve ruler to connect the end of the line you just made to the line on the left side. The left side is where you will have your center fold. Now you can cut out your pattern. Now we are moving to the bottom part of the dress and we are using our basic skirt pattern method. These are the measurements we'll be using. The full length of the dress is 43 inches. Half length is 15 and a half inches, remember? Skirt length will therefore be 43 inches, take away 15 and a half inches will give us 27 inches. So the bottom part of this dress will be 27 inches long. Okay, so we're also going to add um, 1.5 inches for both the hemming and the joining allowance and everything will give us a total of 29 inches to get started place your pattern paper on fold then measure 29 inches which is the total length of the skirt mark measure at the opposite side too and make a mark then connect the two points together remember that the joining allowance at the top is also included in the total measurement so remove the half inch like I'm doing and draw a straight line. This is the actual starting point of the skirt. So insert your waist to hip measurement. My waist to hip measurement is 10 inches. So I'm putting 10 inches. I'll connect the points. From the waistline, measure 27 and a half inches. Okay, that's the total length of the skirt. 27 and a half inches, make your mark. Then you will see that one inch is left at the bottom and that's going to be the hemming allowance okay so you do the same thing at the other side remove your one inch and join together then label the hip line waistline and hemline on the waistline place a quarter of your waist circumference measurement plus one inch for that then go to the hip line and place a quarter of your hip me circumference measurement you can add a quarter of an inch for ease 
After that, use your pattern matter to connect these two points together with a slight curve. Go down to the hemline and transfer the same measurement you use for the hip. By doing that, you will get a straight dress. But if you need it more fitted, just reduce the measurement by about 1 to 2 inches. Join this point to the point on the hip line with a straight line. To form your dart on the waistline, place the same nipple to nipple measurement you used in the upper body's block so that when joining both the top and the bottom of your dress, it matches up. Go down by 5 inches, then mark half an inch on both sides of the line, connect to form your dart legs. So I'm just indicating here the center fold so that we don't forget while we are transferring our pattern to the fabric. Next, you go to the hem line and fold in by one inch, then cut out your pattern. I've gone ahead to trace out the back panel and I'm just indicating it so that we don't get it mixed up. Then I've also inserted the dart at the back, okay, and it's six inches long. The next thing I'm going to do is to transfer the hip line measurement so I'll just transfer my hip line here, then we'll work on the slit at the back. Now the slit height is going to be about 9 inches and 1 and 3 quarter inches wide, okay? Connect these points together, fold at the hem, then cut out your pattern. This is what it looks like. Now we'll be transferring onto our fabric. I've placed the back pattern on the fabric. And cut out a bit of the event area here to give it a better slant. Add one inch side seam allowance and one inch zipper allowance around about the pattern. Cut it out, making sure you have your fabric folded into two so that you have two pieces of fabric for the back panel. For the front, make sure you place your fabric on fold and place the fold on the pattern to align with the fold on the fabric. Then just add one inch side seam allowance, fold in the hem, and cut out your fabric. It's time to transfer all the darts onto the fabric. So using the same method we used in the top part of our dress, that's exactly what you're going to do. Starting with the bodies, take it to the machine and take in the darts. Then place the back pieces over the front piece, right sides facing. Then join the side seam allowance with an inch. This is what it looks like when we are done. You can see it is already coming out taking shape okay the darts have been closed up and we have joined it together so the next thing we are going to do is to finish up the armhole so what you just do is fold in by about half an inch and stitch on it okay look how neat it looks when you are done stitching it's time to join the two back pieces of the skirt together you can see i've taken in the darts you then measure about 8 to 9 inches for the zipper and mark. So from that mark, you sew down to the vent using 1 inch allowance. Then with half an inch, close the upper part of the vent. For more clarity on this, you can watch my basic skirt tutorial. I'll leave a link in the description box below. After stitching the two back pieces together, place the front and back piece on each other, right sides facing, then join at the side seam allowance by an inch. So you can see what it looks like. Here is the zipper space, then the one inch stitch all the way to the top of the vent, then half an inch stitch to close up the vent. At this angle, snip with your scissors making sure it doesn't get through the stitch. This allows free movement of the flap of the vent. Next, place the vent down and stitch on that same stitch line on top of the vent. Also try and serge the edge of the vent or fold in and stitch or use your hemi gum. Pin the flap at the bottom to keep it in place. Then you lift up your fabric, the back part of your skirt and take it to the machine and stitch on top of that line. Okay. The bottom part of our dress has been turned right side out. So what we are going to do next is to attach the top part of our dress. Okay. So, make sure right sides are facing each other. At the center front, you attach and make sure that the darts align together. You can see what I'm doing. So, you align the darts and pin it together before stitching. So, you do that all around the dress. Then, you go to the machine and stitch it. We are done joining both the lower and the upper part of our dress together. Okay? So, you can see what it looks like. Make sure you finish the inside with your serger. 
all right so you can see the vent also i've stitched it down and you can see how it looks everything is coming out nicely we'll be working on the collar now i folded two pieces of fabric and folded again to give it a center fold then i placed the pattern over it making sure that the front fold lies on the fold of the fabric place half an inch allowance all around the pattern except at the center fold then cut out this will give you two pieces of the um, collar on the wrong side of one of the piece iron your interfacing to it then stitch both pieces together at the top with half an inch allowance right sides facing when you are done turn it right side and iron also fold in half inch at the bottom and iron in place make a notch at the center front of the dress do the same for the collar align the notch of the dress and the collar together making sure that the right side of the collar without the interfacing aligns with the wrong side of the front dress neckline use your pins to keep it in place then move to the back starting from the zipper allowance move in the collar by half an inch and start pinning till you are done I should have added one inch allowance to the back of the collar instead of half an inch and it would have matched up with the one inch zipper allowance but do the same for the other side after stitching them together fold over the part of the collar that has the interfacing to cover up the neckline then stitch on top of the edge of the collar with about a quarter of an inch then we are done with the neckline to insert the zip make sure your dress is on the right side Place the zip on the dress right side facing up, then unzip it. Pick the right side of the zip and flip it over such that the teeth of the zip is facing the armhole area. Fold over the excess zip that is at the top, then pin down. Continue pinning all the way down till you get to the end of the space for the zipper. Do the same for the other side, then stitch everything. I'm done sewing the dress. It looks so beautiful and neat. Make sure you finish inside with your serger. I've taken in the hem as well. So if you have found this tutorial in, in any way helpful, give me a thumbs up, share with your friends and family, leave a comment and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye.